In this video, I'm going to show you 10 of the most beautiful Art Deco cameras, including some of the most beautiful cameras ever made in any era. I selected these cameras as part of a study of how Art Deco styles influenced the design of more fashionable cameras in the 1920s and 30s, with geometric patterns, sleek modern lines, and the use of new materials such as Bakelite. I happen to own all 10 cameras, but I'll also mention a few other cameras that could perhaps be on the list instead, depending on one's taste, and I hope you'll add your own favourites in the comments below. At number 10, the Soho Pilot, a folding camera with a Bakelite body, first produced in England in 1933. It's a medium format camera with a simple set of controls, a fixed aperture at f16. It only has one instant exposure speed, but you could select between instant or timed exposures. It's one of the earlier cameras with an Art Deco style body made of Bakelite, but it's not the earliest. That accolade goes to the Raja No. 6 made in 1929, followed by the Kodak No. 2 Hawkette in 1930, but I don't think those cameras are as iconic looking as this one. The Soho has an octagonal front plate with a geometric pattern, and the moulded basket weave inserts on the body are quite effective touches. I like the shaped sides, they look and feel very nice. Virtually all folding cameras up to this point had flat sides. But it's the fabulous Art Deco design on the back that makes this camera special. The Sunburst, designed around the red film view on a patterned background. The Sunburst has a strong, bold, beautiful design, abstract and stylized. Absolutely classic Art Deco. I should say a few words about the Raja and the Hawkette, as both these cameras could potentially have made the top 10. The Raja No. 6 is a simple yet pioneering camera, first introduced in 1929. It has the distinction of being the first mass-market camera whose body was made of Bakelite. It wasn't specifically produced for retail camera sales. Actually, like the Soho Pilot, it was made for promotional campaigns. Looks-wise, I think it's quite a handsome camera. It has a touch of the Art Nouveau style to its front with those curved lines and the mottled plant-like effect, more organic than Art Deco. The number two Hawkette that came out in 1930 was Kodak's response to the Raja Bakelite camera. It was also produced and sold as part of promotional campaigns. The Bakelite body has a different colour with a rather lovely tortoiseshell effect. The front isn't much to look at, except for the subtle stripes, but from the side it has very clean lines. For quite a big camera, it has a good feel in the hand, although it's not as durable as metal and leather covered cameras, as the Bakelite could crack when dropped. Given the use of plastic-like materials, these three cameras are actually quite important in the history of the development of photographic gear. But neither the Raja nor the Hawkette have standout design features. And that's why I've selected the Soho Pilot with its iconic Art Deco sunburst as part of the top 10. At number 9, the Kodak Baby Brownie, first produced in America in 1934 with a moulded Bakelite body designed by Walter Dorwin Teague. The camera uses 127 type film with a 60mm lens, a fixed aperture at f16 and a fixed shutter speed. So a very simple camera. One of the very first genuinely pocket sized point and shoot cameras that was not a folding camera. The smooth Bakelite body is accented with moulded lines that go all the way up the front, around the top, the back and the base. It's good that they haven't embossed the Kodak name in bright colours onto the body. The name is printed in a discreet way around the lens. It keeps the whole design elegant and clean. And this is helped by the pop-up viewfinder on top. It's not intrusive at all, and you can't even see it from this angle. This camera is the first of Teague's designs on my top 10 list. Instead of the Baby Brownie, I did think about selecting an alternative Bakelite point-and-shoot camera designed by Teague, the Kodak Bullet from 1936. However, despite the fact that the bullet has a more streamlined Art Deco style body than the Baby Brownie, and it's a slightly more sophisticated or less simple camera, I think the bullet is actually rather clunky, especially when that screw in and out lens barrel is extended. Having said that, I think the graphical design of this special edition for New York's World Fair in 1939 is wonderful. Back to my choice of the Baby Brownie, this camera also had a special edition made for the New York Fair, and it looks good too. The Baby Brownie is one of those cameras you need to hold and play with to realise how cute and tactile it feels. And the curved shape at the front is perfect for gripping and lining up the camera in both hands. It's a lovely little camera and a fine example of an Art Deco style that really suits the purpose of easy and simple photography. At number 8, the Perma Special, first made in England in 1937 with a sleek body shape made out of Bakelite. 
It has a radical design, it's really a statement camera, and it has its name proudly detailed in gold on the front, in Art Deco style lettering. Take it out of your pocket, and it should really impress people with its modernistic look. Not only does it look radical, it also has some radical control features. Firstly, it has a lens that springs up when you take the lens cap off. It's a 57mm lens with a fixed aperture of f6.3. Pushed in, it helps the camera to retain its sleek profile. Secondly, it has a very unusual mechanism for setting the shutter speed, based on gravity. If you keep the camera in a horizontal position, the shutter speed will be set to a medium speed of 1 150th of a second. If you tilt the camera to the left, the shutter speed changes to fast, and if you tilt it to the right, the speed is set to slow. These orientations are written on either side of the viewfinder. The body itself has thin lines moulded into the Bakelite all the way round, and the controls are rather stylish too. So let's pick up the camera, unscrew the lens cap, and have a look at its controls. As you can see, it's not the smallest camera, and it's not the lightest weight. Some people describe the camera as a miniature camera, but it's too big for that. It may be big, but the viewfinder window looks stupidly small. But when you hold the camera up to your eye, it's not such a terrible view through the finder. In fact, it's better for lining up shots than many pop-up or mirror-based viewfinders on some contemporary folding cameras. I really like the graphical design and positioning of the film advance dial. And turning this dial is how you cock the shutter. The shutter button sits in this very organically shaped inset. It's very comfortable for resting your finger on the button. And now let's hear the camera's gravity-based mechanism for setting one of the three shutter speeds. The camera has a focal plane shutter, and a brass weight changes the width of the slit. And depending on the orientation of the camera, this weight, plus a spring, either slows down or speeds up the shutter. There are some excellent, more detailed explanations of how the mechanism works online. And finally, when you open up the camera, even the inside has rather beautiful shapes with this curved part of the body. Clearly, the camera needed to use square film is 4x4 to match the different shutter orientations. The Perma Special has all the credentials to be an Art Deco classic, one that really pushed the boundaries of camera design in the 1930s. You could argue that it maybe went too far and was a triumph of design over practicality. But actually, it was one of the more popular, lower-priced cameras for sale in the UK, all the way from the late 1930s up to the early 1950s. And it's a very worthy inclusion on this list. And number seven is the Jiffy Kodak VP, a folding camera first made in 1935, in what was then a modern, streamlined body, designed by Walter Daw in Teague. VP stands for Vest Pocket. The body is made of Bakelite with a very smooth moulded front and classic thin Art Deco lines around the body that accentuate the streamlined look. The camera's name and details are engraved into the metal latch down the side to keep the overall design as one of elegant simplicity. And a simple camera it is. It has a 70mm lens with just two aperture settings, f11 and f16, and a choice of instant or timed exposures. It has a pop-up viewfinder on top, and the film winder is out of the way on the base. If you compare the camera to the original heavy metal bodied Vest Pocket Kodak, first made in 1912, well, both cameras look very old-fashioned today. But you can imagine, perhaps, how streamlined and modern the Art Deco styling and Bakelite must have appeared when the Jiffy was first launched. Even the name was streamlined to VP. Here's the Jiffy with its original yellow and black box, another classic Art Deco design. Folded up, it's quite a sleek shape, not too dissimilar in size to other small or vest pocket cameras, including other Kodaks, but I think the Jiffy is a more beautiful camera. And I like the lack of branding on the front, as if to say, you don't need to ask me who I am, you know who I am. The Jiffy is a lovely camera to hold, and I especially like the pyramid shape on the front. It's very sensual in a way. It's the kind of camera that you'd be more than happy to slip into your pocket and take outside on trips and use with family and friends. And in its design and use of Bakelite, it's an iconic Art Deco camera. At number six is the Agfa number 74, first made in Berlin in Germany in 1934. It's a very beautiful Art Deco style camera with a rather unglamorous alternative name, the Billy Clack. The Billy Clack is a medium format camera 
with a fixed 95mm lens and three aperture settings that you can control from the front, f11, f16 and f22. The front face is enameled in a glossy black with geometric chrome lines and the sides are enameled as well with raised chrome lines. The folding struts are particularly well designed and open and shut very efficiently. It has a simple fold down viewfinder on top as well as the mirrored viewfinders that are inset into the front face of the camera. On the back there are some discreet Art Deco style lines and Agfa's logo is quite discreetly impressed on the top front of the body. Here's the camera closed up. Let's have a look at those wonderful struts. They spring open in the most efficient way and they're beautifully engineered. It's fun just to play with them opening and closing. They sort of move like ballet dancers legs. Now Agfa were major European manufacturers of film in the 1930s and they also produced a range of very attractive cameras with Art Deco styling, competing with Kodak. It's interesting to compare the Billy Clack with a similar Kodak camera made in the 1930s, a Jiffy Kodak shown here. Unlike the Kodak, the Agfa is enameled on the side as well as the front, and I think the front has a better, more elegant geometric design. The whole camera has a very coherent, eye-catching look, both open and shut. It's a beautiful camera, and an excellent example of how Art Deco designers use black enamelling and chrome to great effect. At number 5 is the Argos AF, made in America between 1937 and 1938. It's the second version of the Argos A's that started production in 1936. Unlike the A, it had an adjustable lens for focusing. You may never have heard of the Argos A series of cameras, but in the 1930s they popularised the market for 35mm film cameras in America, a new format at the time. 35mm film cameras were pioneered by Leica in Germany, but Leica cameras were expensive and elusive, especially after the start of World War II. The Argus A series provided a much cheaper, mass-produced option for keen photographers, loosely modelled on the Leica, with a collapsible 50mm f4.5 lens. Curiously, the Argos was made by a manufacturer of radios who adopted a number of materials and style features used for radios, such as the Bakelite body, and on the back, an iconic geometric design so characteristic of the fashionable Art Deco period. It was an eye-catching, innovative design at a time when most cameras were still seen as functional instruments rather than fashion items. Taking a closer look at the camera, you can see how many attributes the Argos A shares with the early Leica. Both cameras have approximately the same compact size and shape. Both cameras have a box viewfinder on top and manual frame counters. And both cameras have a collapsible 50mm lens with scale focusing. Reading photographers online who have tried the Argos and the Leica, it seems the Leica and its lens was sharper with better colour rendering, but the Argos stop down was not bad at all. The Argos A's were very successful. They were produced for 15 years and around half a million were sold. It was followed by the even more successful and better known Argus C3 camera in 1939, affectionately known as the Brick, and one of the best selling 35mm cameras of all time. However, the first A and AF cameras deserve to be better known as significant cameras in the history of photography and as undisputed Art Deco masterpieces. There'll have to be some pretty special Art Deco cameras to beat the Argus on this top 10 list. But in purely design terms, as opposed to the commercial impact on the market, there are, in my opinion, four more beautiful cameras that rank above the Argus. At number four, it's the 620 Kodak. First produced in England in 1932, it's a medium format folding camera, one of a number of different versions in this style, including both the 620 and the larger 616. This one is the smallest version with an octagonal front. Other versions have a round front. It has a 100mm f6.3 lens and controls for aperture settings, shutter speeds and variable focusing. The front face has a black and chrome geometric design, nicely set off with the red Kodak logo. Moving around to the side, this particular version has more elaborate chrome struts than other versions. Indeed, these struts are a work of art in their own right. What distinguishes this camera's Art Deco style, above all else, are the enameled sides. And not just the enamel work, but the classic Art Deco geometric design of the body itself and the chrome. This is a superb piece of graphic design, right down to the diamond-shaped chrome piece in the middle, and on the other side of the camera, raised octagons at each end. 
There's nothing much on the back, but given the gorgeous front and sides, that might have been a little over the top. Here's the camera in my hand, and as you can see it's rather cute and pocketable when it's closed. It opens up smoothly, and when it's open, it feels very well balanced, and a pleasure to use. This is the 620 on the left, alongside some of the other Art Deco versions of the 620 and the larger 616, it's the one on the right. Turning two of the 620 cameras to look at their sides, you can see how the design of the struts was changed. I prefer the look of the more elaborate struts on the left, but I have to admit they're not as easy to close up as the simpler design, so that's maybe why they were changed. The other versions have a pop-up viewfinder on the side, also very well designed. However, I rather like the clean lines of the 620 I featured with no pop-up viewfinder. All in all, this 620 Kodak is a very, very beautiful Art Deco style camera. It's one I never get bored of looking at or holding, or photographing as a fantastically well designed and engineered object. At number three is the Kodak Bow Brownie number two, first produced in America in 1930. It's a medium format box camera, and it's the smaller version of the two types of Bow Brownie, the 2 and the 2A. These cameras are made in different colors, and the version here is the burgundy maroon version, with an absolutely iconic Art Deco design on the front, in enamel, designed by Walter Daw and Teague. And on the side, the decorative box latch and the winder are attractively designed. The rest of the camera body is covered in black leatherette. Versions in other colors for the front design also had colored bodies, but personally I prefer this black bodied camera. The graphical design has more than a passing reference to Pierre Mondrian's famous artwork from the 1920s. Kodak produced a range of other Art Deco designs for box cameras, and so did their competitors, but none of them matched the sublime elegance of this camera, incorporating contemporary modern art with such style. The camera itself is a good size for hand holding, not too large. You can get a good grip of it. It has a fixed 85mm lens and controls for f11, f16 and f22 using movable aperture holes. The shutter can be switched between instant and timed exposures, and all the controls are laid out in a conventional old box camera setup. This is how you switch from instant to timed shots. And this is how you change the size of the aperture hole. And here are some of the other colours produced by Kodak. They're highly collectible cameras, although I'm not personally so keen on some of the other colour combinations. I guess rose pink just doesn't do it for me, but it may for others. Anyway, the Bow is a perfect Art Deco style camera, well deserving of its place in the top three of the most beautiful Art Deco cameras ever made. At number two, the Rolleicord 1, a twin lens reflex camera first produced in Germany in 1933. The camera's highly distinctive Art Deco style patterns on a nickel plating meant that it was also referred to as wallpapered in English. The lens that takes the photographs is a Zeiss Triotar 75mm f4.5 and the camera has a full set of controls for setting apertures and exposures as well as the option for instant preset or self-time shutter exposures. The viewing lens isn't coupled to the taking lens. Instead, the part of the body that holds the lenses moves back and forth for focusing. Everything on the camera is beautifully designed from an aesthetic point of view. The dials and knobs and the Art Deco typefaces. It's a real jewel of a camera. It's also a beautifully engineered camera, even if it was surpassed purely in functional terms by later Roliflexes, with their coupled lenses and the film advance linked to cocking the shutter. So even if you only want to display and hold the camera rather than use it, it's nearly perfect as an artistic, decorative piece of history. The first thing you'll notice if you do hold the camera is that it's a fair weight, not over heavy, but it has a very good solid feel. My version is really showing its age, but in my opinion it has a beautiful antique rich look, rather than a tatty look. The back has a large, well-worn table of depth of field and exposure guides. This was made in different languages, depending on where the camera was sold. Let's look at the camera with its top opened, how you'd use it to take photographs. The screen has crosshairs to help line up and focus images. It also had this useful device for magnifying the view. And this is how the viewing lens and the taking lens move backwards and forwards for focusing. 
The dealer who sold it to me was very keen to have me listen to the sound of the shutter mechanism as it moved, and it does have a lovely smooth mechanical sound during long exposures. The Rolecord One is a camera that has the most jewel-like look, feel and sound of all the cameras on my top 10 list, and it's only beaten to the top by one of the most extraordinarily beautiful cameras ever made. Before unveiling my number one selection for the most beautiful Art Deco camera, I'd like to mention a few cameras that could have made the top 10 list. I've already showed you the Bow Brownies in different colours, and there are some other beautiful cameras from the 1920s and 30s with coloured bodies that I've not selected but should mention. Starting in the small is beautiful category with the Coronet Midget, a camera introduced around 1935. The camera came in different colours and has strong Art Deco credentials, especially the use of Bakelite and a classic Art Deco typeface. And then there are the extraordinary Kodak sets, targeted specifically at women. Firstly, there's the Vanity Kodak camera that came in different colours. Introduced in 1928, the camera was included in what was known as the Vanity Kodak Ensemble, with a matching silk lined case, complete with lipstick, compact mirror and change pocket, and it had a very Art Deco style presentation box. And the Petite camera, also part of a Kodak coquette box set, with a matching lipstick and a cosmetics compact. The Petite and sets were produced in different colours, with different Art Deco patterns for the base plate. This blue design, called the Lightning Bolt, is the best, I think. Not all of the colours or designs were entirely successful, in my opinion, but then I'm not the target market for this camera or set. You might like them better than I do. So there are a few alternative, more colourful cameras. Please add your own ones in the comments below. And now on to my number one choice for the most beautiful Art Deco style camera ever made. And number one, it's got to be the Kodak Bantam Special, first produced in America in 1936 with a cast aluminium and enamel body, designed by Walter Daw in Teague. It's a uniquely beautiful camera to look at from every angle, closed up, or when you open up its clamshell-like body. As you can see, the gorgeous black enamel body has distinctive metal lines, and as it moves around, perhaps the most striking view of all is from the side, this is a classic streamlined modernist Art Deco look, not unlike the bar of an ocean liner. At the back it's supremely elegant too, including two viewfinders, one of them a rangefinder. Now I'll open up the camera's outer shell and move it quickly around to the front. And here you can see the camera's excellent 45mm f2 lens, with the controls for aperture settings and exposure times plus the focus mechanisms for the coupled rangefinder. It's surprising how compact this camera is. I wasn't expecting it to be as small as it is from photos posted online. It's definitely pocketable when it's closed. But it's also quite weighty for its size, not only with the metal body, but also because there's so much equipment packed inside. It feels as good as it looks, smooth and rather sensual with the all-over enamelling, the kind of organic curves that Art Nouveau designers would have been proud to produce. It has so many things to push and pull, and everything has been so well designed. For example, the film advance knob extends upwards for easier access. The coupled rangefinder view with a split screen for accurate focusing. It looks small, but actually the view is very clear, and it works very well. And a second viewing window, so you can quickly line up a shot. The cover for the window to see the film slides across. This one for opening up the bag. And this pull-out support that has the camera's unique serial number and acts to support the camera when it's opened up sideways. When it's opened up, the whole camera is wonderfully well engineered. Everything feels so well damped and smooth. Although where it's positioned, the shutter button is a little fiddly. I'd be a trifle concerned about using such an exquisite object as an everyday camera. But it really is a superb camera, surprisingly compact, and a total triumph of both engineering excellence and a stunning design. It's not just an iconic Art Deco style camera, but it's also one of the most beautiful cameras ever made in any style. So that's my top 10. I hope you've enjoyed seeing all these wonderful old cameras, and it inspires interest in the development and design of cameras over so many years. Any comments on my selections are most welcome, 
as well as suggestions for other beautiful Art Deco style cameras, especially from the 1940s onwards, since I've only picked cameras from the traditional Art Deco period covering the 1920s and 30s. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll continue to post videos on lenses, cameras, and photographic techniques of all ages.